What is up, guys? Welcome back to another follow-up video, and today I'm bringing you episode 18 of our Top 5 Mod Series. And before we start the video, I'd like to tell you guys I'm going to be streaming tonight at around 4 or so, maybe 3.30 around that time. So if you guys do, once you go ahead and hop in the stream, it should be fun. We've been streaming a lot lately, and hopefully you guys have been a few of them. So if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to like, subscribe, well, let's get right into it. I with my two fist divine, but I'm going nowhere. Alright guys, so the first mod we have is the Overgrowth Immersive Living Forest and Grasslands mod for the PS4 and is by Mr. Overseer. The description of this mod says, The Wasteland now has a more lively forest instead of completely overhauling the wasteland and he is allowed to become an integrated part of the Commonwealth's biome. The new forest and the grasslands add a little touch of green that still gives you the Fallout vibe. This mod may have incompatibilities with other location modifications, but so far I haven't had any issues. Now, I've done overgrowth mods in the past, but this one kind of separates itself from the pack because it does more than just add green to the world. This one keeps in dead trees and things like that and like shrubs, but it also adds in lively trees and things like that. Most overgrowth mods also add in just stupid looking grass all over the place, even including on rocks. So if you go to like Starlight Drive-In, there's going to be grass growing in the cement, which makes no sense. But this mod actually keeps in the dead look. Um, there's also like when there's going to be concrete and things like that that's all broken up on the roads, it's going to look dead around there. There's not going to be uh, grass that makes no sense in areas. There's still going to be dead trees. There's still going to be dead plants and things like that because the world still is growing. But while it is doing this, it also keeps the Fallout vibe and making it look a little bit dead inside and making it look like an actual wasteland. Also with this mods, in the past overgrowth ones, I've noticed that the frame rate kind of is affected because there's just so much greenery and things like that. But with this one, I haven't noticed too much of a frame drop, and I am playing on the PS4, so um, if you have like the PS4 Pro, it's going to run it better. But personally, I will always have like uh, frames per second issues, including like Far Harbor and things like that. But this one doesn't really affect it at all, which I really do like. This mod also looks super, super good with the water enhancement mod, which just makes the water a lot more clear and things like that, and those mods are going to make your world look so much better. And as you see over here, like I said, like around places where there's buildings and things like that, you're not going to have like stupid grass that doesn't make any sense, like that shouldn't be there. And like you can see on some buildings, there's going to be like actual vines growing up them, which is really, really cool. And overall, it's just a really, really great mod that does it a step farther than the most of the overgrowth mods, and you can really see it shine above the other ones. And like I said, there's not going to be any incompatibilities really unless you're using another overgrowth mod or something like that. I haven't any had any issues with it and um, you're not going to have any other DLCs that you're going to have to have with this. So overall, very very good mod. The next mod we have is the Realistic Gore and Dismemberment mod for the PS4 and it's by Cole O'Korn. description of this mod says that Cole O'Korn presents yet another mod to attempt to improve the behavior of enemies when limbs are dismembered. Enemies have a chance of surviving limbs being blown off through not always though. In addition, this mod also affects humans but super mutants and other creatures as well. Ever wondered why Radstag couldn't survive without its one head? Now you can wonder no more. Sometimes Radstags can actually survive when you blow off one of their heads and along with any other enemies. He says to place it at the end of your load order, but it shouldn't matter too much because this only affects um, only dismemberment models. Like in the first mod, I've presented mods like this in the past, but this one is just a lot better than I figured I would show it to you guys instead of using the lackluster ones I've put in the past. As you can see, when you shoot their limbs, they can be cut off, or it also works with a sword if you're hitting them with some type of melee weapon, you can chop off their arms or their heads or whatever like that and um it works with pretty much every creature in the commonwealth besides maybe like um mire lurks and things like that i'm not sure he doesn't really state it too much but i figured it would work pretty much anyone that has limbs and also it's not only limbs things like that it's also your head and if you shoot them in the torso they also have a chance of just like blowing the bits i'm oh, it's crazy it's crazy mod but overall it's super super fun it's one of those mods that you can add into your game when you're not trying to actually change too much but just make it a lot more fun and just random things like that and so many different things can happen when you shoot at me he's like as you can see here it works with ghouls and everything like that that and overall super fun doesn't require any DLCs or um, have any compatibility with any of my other, other mods that I have seen so uh, definitely recommend putting this in your load order our next mod we have is a Boston Public Library settlement mod for the PS4 by Taylor Marsh one this mod deletes some of the references tied to the quest involving Boston Public Library and it just basically cleans it up and makes it into a buildable settlement. And this place is going to be a super super fun place to build your settlements into because it's just so big and the ceilings are just super cool. So I plan to do a build in here in my base building with mod series later on and make it a really cool type of house or something like that. I'm not sure yet. 
But this guy also says to complete all the quests inside of your actual um, Boston Public Library if you haven't completed any because it will like delete all the ties to it so you're not going to be able to complete them if you haven't already. But besides that, this place is ginormous and there's plenty of rooms to actually build in it. As you can see here, you can go through several different doors and in all of them, all the corridors are actually going to be um, rooms. As you can see here, you're going to need a uh, key to get into this one, but I'm pretty sure you unlocked through a quest somewhere. But um, you could use that for some type of safe room or anything like that. And he didn't get rid of the cool looking statues either. He made them look, um, they left like the tires and stuff at the entrances and stuff like that. And the fountain, which is just amazing. You could make this place into another super mutant hideout. Or you can make this into some type of Minutemen, Minutemen settlement that you can actually go into, buy stuff from, from vendors or anything like that. It should be really, really cool. This place is super, super big. And there's going to be plenty of room to actually build your stuff in. As I've noticed, there's actually a lot of room for your uh, actual base limit size. So you're not going to have to worry about um, running out of any places to build if you're not using an actual like mod that doesn't limit the amount of stuff you can build inside of a base. Now coming up is actually my favorite room of the whole place in here is the fountain room and the fountain just kind of like lights up and looks super super cool and here would be like a really good place for like your little middle of your actual sediment where everyone goes to like do something I don't know I'm just thinking of a whole bunch of ideas in my head and this is actually where the workbench is located too if you're looking for that. Also, there's going to be a steamer trunk next to it that's going to have a whole bunch of different materials inside of here that you can take. It's going to be about 250 of each, or if it's the rare materials, it's going to be 25, such as nuclear material. Also, there's going to be an intelligent bobblehead sitting on top of the workbench. So this guy did actually hook you up pretty good, and he actually did put a lot of work into this, because you can see he's really cleaned it out a lot and made it look really nice. If you guys do make any cool settlements in here that are really, really awesome, make sure to send them to me on Twitter or PSN or YouTube, whatever. I just want to see what you guys can make with this. This mod does not require any DLC or anything like that, and so far that I've seen, it shouldn't affect any other mods inside of your load order. I would put it at the top of it just in case, because he said that, like, if you haven't completed the quest line yet, stuff like that isn't going to work because it's going to delete everything, but... Overall, super super fun mod, definitely should put it in your load order. Our next mod we have is the More Unique Weapons mod by Bio5543, and basically what this mod does is it just adds in a whole bunch of unique weapons into the game as the title states by giving them new abilities and things like that. He added in a total of 11 new weapons you can find inside of your map or on also 3 of the weapons you can actually craft. Now, he gave small little hints on where you can actually find these in a little description with them, so I'm going to be reading this off right now. The Unique Laser Musket can be found inside the Castle Armory. The unique 10mm weapon can be found inside the Diamond City Market. The unique hunting rifle is located in the Super Duper Mart in the bathroom in a locker to the left. The unique missile launcher can be found in the Adam Katz garage to the car right as you walk in. The unique deliverer um, can be found in the first floor of Fort Strong behind the locked door to the left. The unique pipe bolt action rifle can be found right outside the cave next to the Red Rocket Cafe. The unique pipe revolver can be found in the Converger facility inside the armory. The unique 44 Magnum can be found inside the Good Neighbor in the hotel on the top floor on the last room. The unique combat rifle is inside the Rager cabin inside on the right. The unique combat rifle number 2 that can be crafted is in the Forgotten Church inside the bunker. The unique Combat Rifle 3 can be found in the National Guard Training Guards Armory. So as you can see, this guy has put in a lot of effort for this mod to make it as easy to find weapons as possible, and I like how he didn't just give them all to you at like the Vault 111 entrance for you to just take. I like how you actually do have to go find them yourself and go and actually look for them. This mod is super fun, and I definitely do recommend getting it, and it's not going to affect anything inside of your load order or anything like that, and the best part about it, it doesn't require any DLC either. A lot of these gun like mods that add in a whole bunch of new weapons are going to require like the Nuka World or Far Harbor DLC, but this one does it all without requiring any of that. I'm thinking about making a completely separate video and just going in-depth on all the weapons and how he actually changed them to make them more unique than the actual stock weapons, but tell me if you guys want to see that. The final mod we have is the Rickety Resort Sanctuary Bridge by Evil Viking 13, and basically all he did was actually just fix the Sanctuary Bridge, but without making it look all blocky and stuff like many people have in the past by fixing it like completely before it was like actually broken. It actually makes it look like you built it yourself and like repaired it yourself by using just old planks and old railings that you found throughout the wasteland. And the reason I chose this besides the actual other ones, I just make it look a lot better because when your bridge is like completely fixed like I was before the war, it's super super unrealistic, but I like how he actually made a whole bunch of different materials that he used to rebuild it and it just makes it a lot more better than it was before. The description of this mod says if you're like me, your settlement at Sanctuary Hills is a massive fortress with a ton of trade income coming and outgoing, which mine definitely is if you guys have seen it. So why hasn't the bridge been fixed yet? This mod adds in a repaired version of the sanctuary bridge that fits the whole rest of the environment. And this bridge is still usable by all the NPCs and things like that and there should be no frame rate issue at all. 
So that's pretty much all I have for you today, guys. If you did enjoy this episode of the Top 5 Mods series, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Call me yellow demon, always creeping on the avenue. Call like hello, screaming in the mic, like what the fuck is new? I'm that yellow, needing window peeping kid who spit the truth. Who don't meddle with the metal, cause the camera all I shoot. Call me yellow demon, always creeping.